Hi, my name is Jim Weiss. I'm one of the owners of Projectogram. Today I'm going to be presenting a seminar to help you hopefully take your projections to the next level. It's digital code with projection beyond the basics. So whether you're just getting started or you've been doing projections for a little while, hopefully you'll get a little something out of this seminar beyond just what equipment do you need and how do you do projections. And hopefully this will help you get some more bookings in the future. So let's get started. First thing is I'd recommend trying to place your projection somewhere that creates an Instagrammable moment. In both of these projections, you can see the one on the left and the one on the right. The image can be seen all night. The one on the left, it's up on this wall right near the dance floor. It's in the background of a ton of pictures. The one on the right, it's right by the cake, right by the sweets table, again, in a lot of pictures. The one on the left was actually a really great situation for me. I was the DJ for this wedding and I knew the photographer and she saw me setting this up and she saw me taking pictures of it and she just said, hey, that looks really great. And I said, thank you, and kind of joked with her and said, sure would be nice if these ended up, if you know, the, the monogram ended up in a lot of the pictures. And she said, oh yeah, definitely, I'll, I'll see what I can do. And she followed up with me after the wedding, or actually I followed up with her after the wedding and was able to get a whole bunch of pictures. And these are just some of the photos that she took at the wedding. And they turned out great. Um, these are pictures I wouldn't have been able to get because number one, I was DJing and I was working. If I had just gone to set up the monogram on its own and left and come back at the end of the night, I definitely wouldn't have gotten these pictures. So number one, I created like a little network and a connection with the photographer there in order to get these. This was someone I had already known, but to be able to continue to build on that, I emailed her, I said thank you for all the images. When I used them, I credited her. And these just look great and they're so much better than the photos that I could take on my phone. And it's just a great way to showcase your work to your prospective clients. Here's a couple more examples of Instagrammable moments. And these came from pro photographers. So we can take as many pictures as we want with our phones. And hopefully you're spending some time learning the ins and outs of your phone, taking a bunch of pictures. But let's be honest, they're not gonna look as good as the professional pictures. So you need to do your best to try to network with the photographers, follow up with them after your weddings and other events. I recommend somewhere between, you know, maybe six to eight weeks after the event, don't try asking them right afterwards because they're busy editing and getting everything ready and trying to deliver it to the client. So give them a little bit of time before you follow up, but follow up with them and hopefully they're going to able, they're able to provide you with some quality images just like these. These turned out amazing. And like you can see, these are more Instagramable moments. They showed up on the wall. They aren't buried on the dance floor where you're not gonna be able to see them once the dance floor is full. They look great in the background of these images. The one on the right was just a great one. That's at the end of the evening. The couple had a private last dance. You can see the whole room is empty and there's the monogram in the background. And if you look real closely there, you can see the date. That's almost five years ago when we did that projection. So next up, not only the professional picture is important, but taking your own photos is really important. This is a, I just copied this uh, screenshot out of Windows. This is just, just a snippet of how many pictures I took from an event we did last year. So what I tend to do or I try to do is get there uh, quite a bit earlier as long as I'm able to get into the room. Quite a bit earlier so I have plenty of time to take extra pictures and video. And I do know my phone pretty well. I know some of the settings as far as being able to get the uh, exposure higher or lower to make it brighter or darker how to you know, zoom, that's obviously pretty simple. But some of, those, some of those techniques, I've learned how to make the picture look a little bit better, but sometimes it looks better on my phone than it does when I look at it on my computer. So that's why I just go crazy. I take so many pictures. It's kind of a hassle when you get done because then you have to dig through all these. But hopefully I take you know, 30, 40 pictures and video and I end up with like four or five really good ones that I can use to market myself in the future. So highly recommend learning the settings on your camera or your phone really for most of us. Learn those settings, take a whole bunch of pictures and videos. We ask our customers at Projectogram all the time to share pictures and videos with us. And we're actually surprised how many we get that are either out of focus, too dark, too bright. Usually it's too, too dark, not really too bright very often, but too dark, not in focus, just not a good angle. So spend some time getting some pictures just in case you aren't able to get any uh, professional pictures. All right, so not only can you project a monogram or a logo or something for a corporate event, something like that, you can also change the atmosphere of the space when you're doing a projection. So this is an image that we got from Karma Event Lighting, Jeremy 
uh, who's one of the owners, is one of our designers at Projectogram. And they projected this Coachella image uh, at this event, and it was actually an animated uh, design. So what happened was that Ferris wheel was slowly rotating, and I even think that the uh, palm trees were slightly swaying, I can't remember for sure, but it looked really amazing and just helped transform this room. And so when people walked into this space, I'm sure that they were aware, hey, this is a Coachella themed event, and it really just helped fit and was just another way for them to be able to sell a projection at this event. Maybe they didn't want a logo projector. They didn't have something specific to project like a logo or a monogram or names or something like that. But in this case, we're able to project an, an image that creates this feeling and makes the room feel different. Don't forget that you can use color with projections. For those of us who come from the world of Leco's, um, Gobo projectors, uh, Source 4, that sort of thing, we're kind of trained that everything has to be white. Um, you can use color. You can use color and it doesn't cost you anything extra. That's the great thing about using a video projector. The only thing I caution you is you want to be prepared that the surface you're projecting on maybe won't look as good with color as it would with white. So both these examples, they look really good. The one on the right, you may not even notice that there is anything in color because it looks pretty white and it is. Um, however, that period is green and it was really important to the client that that dot was green for the logo for that projection. So we were able to accomplish that with no problem and it looked good. The one on the left, you can see the color looks great. Everything pops just, just excellent. Uh, the, the reason why you wanna be prepared is what if, you're, what if you have a, a venue with a dark colored wall um, that just doesn't look good or a color that just makes your colors not look the way that they're supposed to look like. Let's say, for crazy example, let's say it's a light pink wall or something. Um, or maybe some wallpaper that's just gonna make the projection not look the color that it's supposed to, you're gonna have a little bit of a problem. So what we do and what we recommend is always be prepared with a white version of whatever you're projecting at your event. Um, if you order your design from Projectogram, that's something we can do for you. We can give you a color version and a white version. If you're doing your design yourself, highly recommend being prepared with both a color and a white and let your client know in advance. Um, I've had some events where they, they wanted to project it in color and I said, I will do everything in my power to project in color, but if I can't, if it doesn't look good in color, do I have your permission and is it okay that I go with white? And I've never had anyone say no, and a couple times I've actually had to go to the white version just because it ended up looking better. So recommend you letting your client know in advance about that and being prepared with it. So with that said, Yes, you can do color. However, I still recommend projecting in white if you can. This image is one of the best images that shows why white is so good. Uh, this one shows specifically why it's good in terms of uplighting. In this image, you can see there's six different colors there of uplighting, and in every single image, the projection looks great because it's white. So it wasn't affected, let's say, let's say that the, the client wanted the monogram in purple. So that bottom middle one, that, uh, that monogram in purple would have just blended in, not look good whenever the uplighting was purple. So white is gonna pop with all these different colors, it's gonna look really good. And then also it's just gonna be brighter because um, you're basically pulling in all the colors of the spectrum to get that white. So the brightness is gonna be better. It's just gonna look really, really good. I, I, I just think it pops. And people are used to seeing white. Like they're used to, for years and years we've seen uh, on Instagram or different social media, Pinterest, whatever, brides are used to seeing the projection being in white or the monogram would, you know, what would have been a gobo. They're used to seeing in that white. So it's okay for it to be white. Sure, color is cool, but I, I personally really like white. That's, that's my uh, usual suggestion to my client is to go with white unless it's a specific logo that they really want color or that color is really gonna, like let's say they're gonna have a static color of uplighting all night then of course you can go with a color projection as long as you know that it'll contrast okay with it. So just be aware of all that. Another way you can make more money from your projections is doing two. So this image is another one that we got from Karma. If you haven't checked them out before, it's Karma Event Lighting. Jeremy and their team, they just do amazing work. So here's an example of a room that looks so much better with two projections. I'm a big fan of symmetry. I'm not sure if Jeremy or someone at Karma suggested to them to project this uh, design twice or if they, if the client just asked for it on their own. But in my opinion, it looks great. Sure, you could have projected it over on the left side by the cake and it would have looked just fine. 
But looking at this picture the way that it looks, I'm sure if you took this image by itself with just the one design or looked at it again with both, you would probably agree that it looks better with both. The great thing about doing uh, digital projections or digital gobos as we call them, the great thing about doing them is you are you only have one cost in order to get a projection ready design. Um, now that cost is obviously zero if you do the design work yourself. But if you have someone like us do it or someone else do your design work, um, the great thing is you only have to pay one time for that design and then you can project it as many times as you want. Um, we've even had venues where we give them the design and they put it on TVs all around the venue in addition to us projecting it somewhere. So the great thing is your cost is only, one, you know, you only have one cost, one fixed cost to get that design for this event and then you can project it several times. So in this case, you know, maybe they charged their rate times two because it was two projections or maybe they charged you know, full price for the first one and some sort of discount for the second one. But the bottom line was they were able to make more money from this event by projecting the image twice. Um, with that said, I wouldn't recommend forcing, you know, don't, don't try to just force another monogram or logo or whatever design in a space just because you want to try and upsell and make a little bit more money. You still want it to look good because you want the event to look good and you want to reflect um, good on your company that you projected something that ended up looking really good in pictures and in person. So here are some ways that you can make more money with your projections. Number one, sell the benefit of digital image projection or we call it digital gobo projection. Those in the event industry are familiar with the term gobo. So that's why we have chosen to use digital gobo projection. And then we explain what the digital aspect is and we say we're using a video projector. You don't have to spend a lot of time going into the you know, super technical aspect of it. The way I kind of describe it to most people is we used to use something that looked like the Batman symbol, like a piece of steel, and now we use a video projector. And we have so much more capability of what we can do with that video projector. So we've had really good success doing that. Another way you can make more is you charge more. Uh, it may seem a little bit crazy because your cost is so much lower. For a long time, we did steel gobos, which ran us you know, somewhere between $50 and $70 with shipping. For a long time, I did glass gobos because I just did not like the look of a steel gobo. Those were like 120 bucks with shipping. Now my cost is 20 bucks. So my cost has gone way down. So you would think that I can keep my cost the same and make a lot more or even lower my cost. However, I think the perceived value is higher because it looks better. So in my opinion, it's worth more. So we raised our prices. We were at uh, 250 for a static design and we went up to 325. And then we weren't doing anything with animated because there just isn't a way to do that with a with a regular gobo. But for animated, we do 425. And I'm talking about our, you know, my DJ and lighting company. That's what we charge our clients to do these. Now, every company, every person's different, every market's different. So of course, charge whatever you feel comfortable with or whatever you want. I'm just letting you know that like we bumped our rates up and didn't have any pushback or see any problems on it. So I recommend at least experimenting with that a little bit. Um, especially as you have to buy your equipment, you need to offset that cost a little bit. You can offer to project at venue open houses or bridal shows for free. So at a bridal show, you can offer to project the, the um, logo for the bridal show. Maybe they'll give you a discount on your booth if you say, hey, I'm gonna help brand your event for you. Um, typically, we recommend at bridal shows or open houses that you project actual monograms and we can help you out with that. I'll give you some more info at the end. But typically we recommend that you project actual monograms. Um, kind of, it just gives a little bit different feeling than if they just see your logo or the bridal show's logo. But maybe you can do a couple projections if it's a bridal show. Maybe you can do the bridal show logo somewhere prominently, and then you can do an actual monogram somewhere. And then it's kind of cool because you could say, hey, we did the branding for this event. We projected the logo for the bridal show, but then, hey, look, look over here. This is what it could look like if we did your name with a, with a digital gobo. So recommend doing that. Same thing for the um, uh, networking groups. If you're doing a, if you're part of any networking groups and they have any sort of luncheons or evening meetings or anything like that, you can project at those and offer to provide that service for free. And especially because it's so easy to do once you have the artwork done, if you provide that projection there, it gives you a way to showcase your work. Um, we did that quite a few times when we first got started and we, mostly did animated because we wanted to show that off a little bit. Hey, look how cool this is. Look at this new thing that we're doing that no one else is doing. And it got a lot of interest for us and got us some referrals and got us on some lists with planners and venues simply because we were offering something that no one else was at the time. 
And then with that said, sell the animated. So that's something, it's still newer. And in your market, it may still be brand new. Like no one in your market may be doing it. So I recommend selling the animated if you can. It's not, it's, it doesn't have to be a hard sell. It doesn't have to be a push or anything, but it can just be a matter of if, they, if they're interested in, in a monogram or some sort of projection, you can let them know, hey, we can do this static or we have the option to animate it and just add a little bit of something extra and you can show them what it looks like and give them the idea so that way they can decide if that's something that they want. Okay, so when we get images from DJs and lighting companies of the projections that we've given or the designs we've made for them. So we, you know, we make the designs, we email them to them and then they project them. We don't see this all the time, but we see it a fair amount of time, whether it's in the designs that we do or just on the internet somewhere that there's a, an uplight shining right through the middle of that projection. I cringe a little bit every time I see it for a couple reasons. Number one, um, it's gonna just wash it out a lot. Um, now, if the room's really dark and you have a really bright projector, it'll probably be fine. It probably won't be that big of a deal. Um, but you're washing out this beautiful projected image that you've just done. Uh, in addition, I just think it looks so much better when you frame the design. So if you put the up lights on either side, not only are you not washing it out, but you're creating this really nice framing that just draws attention to the projection and just makes it look so much nicer and really, really good. Um, in addition, it can help with that black box or gray box. Um, we'll talk more about that later. Uh, actually, that's that's in the, the intro seminar. I don't think that I even have to cover that one, this one. Um, but. If, if you're not familiar with getting rid of that gray or black box, you just need some ambient light, you need a little bit of distance, um, but up lights can help get rid of that box as well. So if you have an up light on either side, if you're concerned at all about the box, um, you know, the gray box, the black box, the up lights on either side will really help with that. It's a really great way to help get rid of that box. Again, m most of the time, like I've, I'd never see the box with what the way we do our projections. We use DLP projectors. Sometimes with LCD, you may see it, or if you're really close to where you're having to project, you may see it. So that's where up lights can help, but not necessary. For me, the biggest benefit is it just, it cleans it up. It makes it look so nice to frame them. So that's why I like putting them on the sides. And then again, it doesn't wash it out like that first image that I showed. So in addition, you want your uh, equipment to look nice. Uh, let's say you're DJing a wedding. A lot of our customers are DJs also. You spend a lot of time cleaning up all of your cords, making everything look nice, using gaff tape, using Velcro, using all sorts of different things to make your equipment look really nice. So why, let, why not do the same thing with your projections? In this image, you may be hard pressed to find the projector, but it's there, I promise. Uh, we are using a flat base stand and it's super neat, super clean, very compact. And that's why we like them. It looks professional, it's small, it's just different from a tripod. In this case, it's less of a trip hazard. You can see here when we've zoomed in and shown you exactly where the projector is, if this was a tripod, the legs would be sticking out and we do this venue all the time. You would trip this table that's, this table that's right here in the middle. That table that's right there in the middle, uh, it is going to be in the way of if you have a tripod there. You will probably have someone trip on it. So in the case of something like this, the flat base stand just looks really great and it serves a good function as well. Same for this flat base stand. If you use the tripod to the right of where this projector is, is the entrance to this, to this country club. If you had a tripod there, number one, it just kind of looks a little bit amateur for a projector like that. Here you have this really fancy, nice projector, and then you have this tripod that looks a little old school. So number one, it looks nice, looks neat, looks clean, but then also is less of a, a tripping hazard as well because this is a high traffic area. So recommend flat base stand if you're able to um, add that to your equipment inventory. I'm a big believer in not projecting on dance floors. I have a whole list of reasons why. This one is one of my main reasons and it's just the matter of how the pictures end up turning out. This wasn't one of my weddings. This is an image I just found on the internet. And I've shown this to couples over the years when they say they want to have their monogram projected on dance floor. They've, so many brides have seen these images on Instagram or Pinterest of this beautiful open dance floor. It's, it's totally empty, you know, probably the room's even empty. And here's this monogram shining so beautifully and neatly right in the center of the dance floor. And it does look really great right then. 
However, put the bride and groom on it and you end up getting an image that looks like this. Uh, I know some DJs that say, well, we just turn it off then or we point it somewhere else. My answer to that is why, why do that? Why take away from the, the act of the first dance by turning it off? Why hiding something that they've paid for? Why hide something that they've paid for? Or why move something that they've paid for to someone that's not going to look as good? Why not put it somewhere that it can look good the whole night um, and won't detract from pictures? Every single time I've shown someone an image like this, uh, every single time I've shown a couple this, they say, oh man, that just doesn't look good. Um, the other thing I hear some DJs say is, well, we just tell our couples don't dance on it. That couple has so much going through their mind during their first dance. The last thing they're going to think of is I need to make sure not to dance on the monogram. And in more cases than not, they actually dance right on it, like in this image, because uh, it's, it's almost like a spotlight. It's like, oh, he, well, here, this, this looks like the center of the dance floor. Let's dance right here. And they aren't even thinking um, subliminally, subliminally that they shouldn't be dancing on that. So I recommend not doing the dance floor. That's the first reason why images or pictures, I should say. Next reason why is it just doesn't look as good. There's a couple reasons why it sometimes doesn't look, a good, look as good. Number one, the surface of the dance floor. Um, number two is viewing angles. So you can see from these two images right here, these were, per, per, um, these were given to us by Karma Event Lighting. Thanks again to Jeremy and the team over there. So um, this was provided to, them by, provided to us by them. And you can see uh, there's a monogram on the wall and there's a monogram on the dance floor. The monogram on the wall looks amazing. It looks really great, crisp, clear, bright, looks great. And I'm sure it looked great in pictures. And then you can see the dance floor and it doesn't look quite as good. Actually, it doesn't look very good at all. And then if you go to the very next image that they sent us, this is the same dance floor with the monogram on it. And if you look really, really closely, you can see the monogram, but it's so hard to see from this angle. So I'm gonna back up and here we are looking at it head on if you're walking towards the dance floor and it looks good. And that's where you want it to look good. So mission was accomplished with that, but it, you, it's almost non-existent right here and it just doesn't look really good. So avoid the dance floor for the viewing angle. Um, the, the color of the dance floor plays a big role here. This wood, especially parquet, is really hard to project on. So uh, for that, for the pictures, for the viewing angles, for all those different reasons, we personally don't do dance floors. Like if, if someone contacts us for our DJ and lighting company to, to project on a dance floor, we tell them that we don't do it. What we recommend is doing a vinyl overlay and we don't offer that service. We just recommend a couple companies that do that. But I would rather them book something that's going to look good the whole night that they'll be happy with versus doing something like this that I'm not gonna be happy with. That's gonna make me a little bit nervous and anxious because I know there's a good chance it's not gonna look very good and ultimately not make the client super happy. So the vinyl overlays look amazing because there's no light. Sure, you don't see it when you're dancing, but if they really have this vision of a monogram on the dance floor, the overlay is totally the way to go. Um, I don't do dance floors. I'm a big believer in not overselling. Uh, just to sell, just to have another upgrade to make some money on at every event. So we posted this uh, image, uh, gosh, a couple years ago probably. And it was interesting, we got some feedback. I feel like a few people even said back then, it was quite a while ago, so I don't remember 100% sure. But I feel like some people said, oh, well, I can find some spots here or there. And they may have been joking or they may have been serious. I'm not 100% for sure. Um, but I would not be surprised at all if someone did try to stick a monogram somewhere in this space. And yeah, there are like little areas, like you can see right up here maybe, you could probably squeeze one in, but this space, number one, it's just it's a cool little space and hopefully you can tell from the image, it's pretty tight in there. And it's a small venue, um, I wanna say maybe 40, 50 people at the most. It just isn't a good fit. And the funny thing is, for this particular wedding, they asked us about projecting a monogram. I did a site visit, I'd never worked this venue before and I walked through the whole layout with the bride and I said, you know what? I just don't think that there's a good spot for it. I just don't think it's gonna look good without looking too busy. And the great thing is, this is a professional picture, going back to what I talked about at the very beginning about getting those pro professional pictures. The great thing is, this is a, a pro photographer here. I had never worked with her before. She just found our lighting company online and booked us. She provided this um, photo to me afterwards. Um, and 
she was thrilled with everything that we did, with the lighting, with everything, ended up referring us in the future for events. That's not to say that if I had gone ahead and projected a monogram somewhere that I wouldn't have had a great image also and referrals in the future, but she was truly happy with what we did and appreciated the fact that I was honest and said, hey, I just don't think that you need a projection here or it would look very good. So just keep that in mind when you're quoting your events and looking at your different venues that you're working in. Sometimes a venue isn't a good fit for a projection. Next, I'm gonna talk about ghost files. Uh, if you're a Windows user, you can not pay attention for a, uh, about 20, 30 seconds here, or you can skip ahead a little bit. This is only going to apply to Mac users. So Mac, for some reason, does something called ghost files, or they actually, the official name is actually called Apple Double Files. So what it does is if you look at these images over here on the left, or the, these file names over here on the left, it creates these extra files with this period and this underscore for every single image. So there's an image, there would be an image, let's say you had an image called 123456.jpg, let's say you had that, that's the real file. Then it would create this, this ghost file, this Apple double file, and that file will not work in a media player or a projector if you plug it into your projector. So what happens is, we get people that sometimes test it in their projector or media player and freak out because they're like, hey, my files can't be read or something's wrong. It's because it's this, this Apple double or this ghost file. Only happens on Mac. So if you're PC, again, this isn't an issue for you. If you're on Apple, uh, you can, a couple things. I've heard that there's um, a utility or some sort of program that you can get or some sort of app that you can get that'll delete those off like thumb drives or external drives. The other thing you can do is some media players will actually allow you to delete that file uh, from the drive from the media player because you can't just delete it in Apple like you can't just navigate to the drive and see those files and delete them you just won't see them you can't delete them the only way to delete them is with one of that utility that I've heard about I'm not quite sure the name um, or with um, uh, your media player so those, that's the two ways to get rid of it so just be aware that that is something that can happen to you I want to talk for a second about backup uh, backup is really important to have. You wanna make sure that you have backup equipment with you. These are a few of the things I think you really need to make sure you have backups for. So at every projection event we do, we always bring a backup projector, every single one. I wanna make sure that if something goes down with my main projector, we have a backup ready. In addition, we also have a backup bulb. Um, I don't know that you really, really, really need both. Um, backup projector or bulb should be okay. The only problem with one or the other is if you only do the backup bulb and then something else is wrong with the projector, then you have a bigger problem. Um, so that's why I like having both. The only reason why we have both is because we did start with just a projector and a backup bulb. Um, so we just go ahead and bring the backup. We have the backup bulb with us anyways, but then we still have a, a projector with us too. So I recommend both if you're able to. You can. You don't have to have the same maybe quite high-end or nice projector for your backup as you do for your main projector. I know a fair amount of people that get refurbs or maybe they retire a projector and that becomes their backup. So whatever you do in that situation, I just recommend having one. Media player, I recommend, even if your projector will show an image with, um, you know, just plug the USB into the projector, I always recommend bringing a media player in case there's some sort of problem. And then I also recommend bringing at least two media players. I've had to toss a media player before. I can vividly remember the one time I did it. There was only one time for sure I did it, but I know I've had issues a couple other times I've gone to my backup, but there's only one time for sure I know I just threw one away. I was trying to get it to work. It was giving me all sorts of problems. I said, you know what? This thing's like 35 bucks, garbage, onto my next one. And I used my backup and everything was fine. And then I just bought another one to replace the one that I had thrown away. Um, at 30, 40 bucks, like I'm not one to just throw equipment away, but at that price point, I don't wanna take a chance that it's gonna be problem equipment. So I just tossed it and bought another one. Um, I recommend at least bringing two with you out to every single event. One of the most common things we get for our designs, if you aren't familiar with Projectogram, if maybe you just stumbled on this on YouTube or Facebook or something like that, one of the main things that we do, or the main thing that we do is, is graphic design. Um, we do static design, we do animated design. We have this big catalog of template designs. Um, so we have this pre-made design. You can tell us your couple's names or initials or date or whatever, and we customize it. We do tons of those, and those are great, and we love doing them, and we're glad that we're able to provide that service. 
Something that I really enjoy that we do and something I think that we're really good at is custom design. In this case, for this wedding, and you've seen this image a couple times throughout this presentation, it's because it's a wedding that I personally DJed and did the lighting for, so I had a big hand in, in multiple parts of this. But in this case, they sent us their design, which also is going on multiple things at the wedding. So you can see here, it's on the napkins. It was on this big image, uh, like near the sign-in table. It was just a whole bunch of different places. And they said, this is what we'd like you to project. And so no problem at all. They provided me with a picture of the design. I sent it to our lead designer and he was able to turn it into a projection ready design. You can certainly have us do a template design. We're happy to do those. But I encourage you to ask your couples, do you have a monogram? Do you have any sort of design? Help them kind of brand their event. No, it's not corporate. No, it, you, and you don't even really have to call it branding to them. But you know in your mind, or you maybe you can help explain it to them in a way that doesn't sound like it's some sort of sponsored thing or corporate. It's really just about creating some, some um, you know, just basically keeping everything consistent. Just some consistency throughout the event that, hey, they're seeing that design both on the napkin and on the wall and by the guest book and all these different places. And it just feels, um, it just feels like it all goes together and it looks really nice. So I recommend if you're able to do a custom design because it's going to make it stand out and look, look a little bit different. I love this image. This was provided to me, um, or provided to Projectorgram. This was provided to us um, by It's Your Night. And I love this image. Uh, the reason why I love this image is when, when William, the owner, sent this to me, I couldn't believe how good this looked. Because uh, you could tell it's pretty bright outside. And that image, um, the projection, the logo, it's not like super, super bright, but it's also not dim at all. Like it looks like it looked really good on that wall. And, and the great thing is that that's a gray wall, which sometimes can knock down the brightness a little bit. And so I asked William, the owner, I said, of course I had to know what projector did you use to achieve this? Because I, I thought for sure this is a five or 6,000 lumen. Believe it or not, this was actually a 3,500 lumen projector. So 3,500 lumen projector created this image. So I, I show you this to illustrate and show make a point of you no, know you don't want to run towards the light. You don't want to look for a space that you can project that has all kinds of light. That's not the goal here. But just to let you know that don't be afraid of the light. Your projector, if you get a good projector, it can fight through the light and it can look okay. And in this case, if I had to guess, and actually I know for sure, uh, I think he said something like, you know, this was a little bit before dusk or something. So this was, this was an event that was going to go through the evening. Uh, here's another one that I, this was an event that our company did. So I know that we set this up during the day, but the event took place in the evening. So in this case, it didn't matter that it looked good during the day, but this is a great image to show, hey, sun's shining in bright, super bright on this wall, and the image looked great even with that. So it looked really amazing at night, but just to show, hey, it can look great even uh, with sunlight coming in. In this case, you have sunlight coming in, you have the room lights on, the projectors all the way on the other side of the room and again look really great so don't be afraid of the sunlight if you're nervous about it and you haven't done a bright room or a bright space um, and it's going to need to be projected while it's bright um, go ahead and test it you know see if you can do a site visit check with the venue see if they'll let you in and let you do a site visit so you can try it but just want to let you know it's not something you need to be afraid of it can work and it can look really good as far as distance goes uh, we often hear from people, how far can my projector shoot? How, how good can it look from a far distance? How do I need a long throw lens? You know, what do I need? So this was an event that we did, gosh, quite a few years ago. And it was from across the street that we projected this. So the, I'm going to jump ahead to the kind of behind the scenes image. So the projector on the right here is a Ben Q MW769, uh, 4,200 lumens. And then on the left, we have a, I believe it was a Source 4 Junior. So we projected, we created this uh, almost uh, spotlight on the entryway. They wanted the spotlight on the entryway, but then they wanted the logo on the right. So we were able to create this by just uh, hooking all this stuff up across the street. They helped us get power situated with a building across the street. They got in touch with, it was part of this big complex in Dallas where it's all owned by the city. So it made it a lot easier for us to get power, which was probably the biggest hurdle. But this was the second year we'd done it. You can see it says Black Tie Brawl 2. We had done it the previous year, so I knew what we were in for and I knew it was fine. But the first year, 
We hadn't shot anything, I don't think this far before to know exactly how good it was going to look. And it, it just looked awesome. It looked really, really good. Had no problems at all. Um, so it's just a matter of making sure that you have a bright enough projector. The 4200 lumens was totally fine. Um, my common philosophy on projectors as far as lumens goes is just buy as bright as you can afford. Um, so if you can afford a 5,000, 55, 6,000 6, lumen projector, go ahead and get it. But you know that a 4,000 lumen projector can, can achieve this. And interestingly, jumping back just a little bit here for a second, this was also a BenQ projector. So um, I'm a big believer. I really like BenQ projectors. Um, Optimus are pretty good also. Um, JVC, which we recommended quite a few years ago, um, we only owned the one that was the one that was on this big blowout and was, was sold for really cheap. So I don't know how their other projectors are. The one that I have of theirs, we really like. But BenQ is probably my favorite as far as like the brand that I've, I've bought a bunch and used a bunch and I have other um, DJs or lighting companies I know that have bought them and used them and really like them. So um, they, they just do good work and you can see it looks really nice here. Now, you should be familiar with Keystone. More than likely, if you're watching this, you've at least done projections for a little while. Um, so you're hopefully at least a little bit familiar with it. But if not, Keystone is basically just being able to make an image look good from different angles without it being all stretched out and skewed and looking all distorted. So if you look really closely here, you'll see just a little bit, you see my projector peeking out over there. So this was another um, event that I had personally done. I personally set it up and I was actually getting a little bit frustrated with this one. Um, I was using an Optima and I don't love the corner correction that they have on these. Um, it, it does the job, like you can make the image look good, um, for me, I just have a little bit harder time keystoning it or co doing corner correction. So I remember I spent quite a while working on this one. And by quite a while, I don't mean like an hour or half an hour, maybe maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes. That's something that I thought should have taken me about five minutes. And part of it is that you have this ability to make the image look so good that you want it to look really, really good. So I kept, you know, I, I kept, you know, fixing it a little bit, going stand in the center, making sure it looked good. Checking with, you know, I, I even asked the, someone that was there, third part, hey, can, can you tell me what you think here? Because I think this looks good. Um, so there is a little bit of an art to keystone and corner correction. So I recommend that you spend some time learning it if you haven't spent some time learning it. And I don't mean learning it as the buttons you push, because it's pretty easy to learn. You push this button and you push this button. More just a matter of kind of the art of, of making the image look good. There, most projectors have something that's called like a pattern test or a grid that has all these like lines and allows you to make the image look good without it showing the monogram or design or whatever it is that you're projecting. So you can certainly do that. I'm not the biggest fan of doing that. What I usually will do is I go to an empty source. So let's say I have a media player on HDMI 1. I'll go on my projector to HDMI 2 and then I'll just see like a big blue or big black box on the wall and then it's going to be all like stretched and skewed. So I make that into like a perfect rectangle. Then I jump back to my source and it's usually not perfect, but it's usually really, really close to the point that I can fix it really quickly. I, I can't really explain why I don't love the Optimus. I just don't feel like they, they keystone quite as well or four corner actually quite as well. Um, the JVC I love, the BenQs I love. That's not to say that the Optimas aren't good and you can't make it look good. Just for me, I've had a little bit harder time with it. And maybe it's because I learned on other brands and like those other brands a little bit better. Um, but just be aware that the great thing is you have the ability to make the image look really good. Uh, just be aware that you need to know how to manipulate it in such a way to make it look as good as it can. So that about covers everything that I had. A um, couple different things that I want to mention here at the end. Um, number one, you can email us, you can send an email to info at projectorgram.com. We have this really awesome zip file that has just tons of information that'll hopefully help you, or tons of resources, I should say, that'll help you with your business. So the first thing that it does is it gives you a whole bunch of sample files. So if you haven't been doing this at all, or if you've only been doing it for a little while and would like some sample files, it's gonna have some sample static files and animated files in different sizes. So you can test uh, doing some projections. You can use these at bridal shows, open houses, whatever. So it's a great way for you to have some different images to project. You can use those samples to test. So you can use those to test uh, or to practice using uh, Keystone and corner correction. So it's helpful for that. In addition, we also have some um, stuff that you can use for marketing materials. So we have pictures and we have videos. 
Now these are uh, images from designs that we've done, so work that we've actually projected, um, pictures and videos from those. You're welcome to post those, use those on social media, your website, whatever. And we're not suggesting that you pass them off as your own work. We're not saying that you say that you did it, but it's merely an example of you being able to say, this is something that we can do. Um, here's an example of something we can do at your wedding, or here's something that we can do at your private party or corporate event or whatever. Um, they are just, most cases, actually probably all cases, iPhone photos. So they aren't gonna be these amazing pro, pro pictures because we don't have the rights to distribute those or share those with you. Um, but hopefully these will get you something. We use them all the time. You, you, you've seen a bunch just in this slideshow and they end up looking really good even though they are just that. So feel free to email us for that information. We're happy to email you a link to download that zip file. We have so much information on our website. We try to put as much information about this technology and how to do this on our website. In addition to just the different pages on our website, like we have a whole 101 area and just some different pages with tips. In addition to that, we have a blog that has tons of information. So feel free to read through our website, read through the blog, and hopefully you'll learn something from that. And then if you are on Facebook and if you aren't in the Projection Pros group, highly recommend joining it. Myself, Laura from Projectogram, Jeremy, Max, um, Several members of our team um, are in that group, participate in that group, super friendly group, people that are just there to help you answer basic questions as well as more advanced questions. So it's a really great group to be a part of um, just to hopefully help you further your projection business. Um, so I really hope that you were able to learn something from this. I hope that there was some helpful information here that you email us if you'd like that um, zip file with all that helpful information and, and marketing materials and resources. Um, and that you're able to learn something from our website. If you ever have any questions or need, need anything at all from us, feel free to reach out to us. We have an instant chat on our website that you can contact us Monday through Friday, or you can feel free to email us anytime. So thanks. You can find us at projectorgram.com.